As you eventually grow into an adult, you will find yourself dealing with bigger transactions in life like shouldering your college debt, getting a home for yourself, and finally, acquiring your first car. Now, purchasing your first car is a bigger deal than you think. It is much more than just choosing a model you like and then leaving with your new ride. There are many more aspects to consider in buying a car, so for today's video, we're going to delve deeper into what these aspects are. Hi everyone, and welcome to Upthink. If you are new here, go ahead and click that subscribe button below to be a part of our learning community where we talk about tips and tricks that can help you in your everyday life. Purchasing your first car is an exciting experience. It is a great asset that can help you in your day-to-day -day activities. You will appreciate the freedom to travel whenever and wherever you choose with your automobile. Since this is your first car, we want to be cautious here and not cash out a significant amount only to regret our decision later now, do we? So let us start with the most straightforward tip before we get into more complicated factors. First, where you should consider buying your car. Regardless if you want to purchase a used model or prefer one of the newer ones, it is best to go through a dealer near you. When you have your own car, maintenance or repairs are inevitable as time goes on. So, for convenience, having the place where you purchased your car near you would make it easier to bring it over for such instances. Next, what size of a model should you consider? How many people are in your household? How much space do you need when traveling? First, consider these two things, your companions and the storage. You would not want to buy a car that is needlessly too big and has large storage, only for it to not have much use to you for now, well, not for your first car at least. Other aspects to consider are the size of your driveway, the fuel efficiency, and which size is the most convenient for you when driving. These aspects should have an influence on your decision about what kind of car to buy. So you keep this all in mind once you go to choose a car, but there is one essential thing that you need to do. Test driving. Sure, you can have all the information in the world, but actually driving it yourself can provide you with a different perspective. Test driving can support the aspects of checking which car is the most convenient for you when driving, like the height of the vehicle, how accelerating and hitting the brake feels, and many others. To check how compatible the car is with you, at least 30 minutes of test driving should do the trick. Try driving the car out on highways and into the city to see how compatible the car is with you. If you could get a second opinion while doing that test drive, that would be good too. Now, so far, that was all simple advice, but buying a car requires more than just this. So let us talk about negotiating. So you want a good car, but you also want to get it at the best deal. Most of us may not be a people person. However, as long as you have a clear picture of what you want, it may be easier than it seems. Have you ever wondered why some people buy their vehicles by the end of the year? It is because savvy buyers know that salespeople are desperate to meet their annual quotas, giving them room for negotiation and potentially great deals. With your purchase, they could get their target sales and that year-end bonus. So if you want to pick a good time to strike a deal, December is the best opportunity to take home something special. Even better if you strike an agreement on the last day of the year, December 31st. Now not everyone can wait as long as the end of the year to get a new car, but look at it this way. You have ample time to consider the factors of buying your new vehicle and saving enough for when the time comes. Reports even show that buying on New Year's Eve can let you save up to 8.3% off the price of a new car you would be able to cut costs on thousands of dollars for your automobile. Since you now have an idea of when is the best time to buy a car, how are you going to negotiate when you strike the deal? Here are a few steps you can try. Number 1. Comparing prices If you are looking to get the best deal on your car, one of the first steps should be researching and comparing. Prices between dealerships may vary based on their sales quotas, so it is important that when shopping around for a new vehicle online or in different parts of town, make sure that all cars are like for like, the same model with identical features. Most important though is getting familiarized before even entering a dealership. Doing research beforehand can maximize your negotiating power and help you score an unbeatable price. Number 2. Planning ahead of time the point of negotiating is all about the amount, so it is best to have an idea of what to expect upon conversing with a car dealer. Let us say the car you want to purchase is $50,000.
Divide that by the months of a common 5-year term, which is 60 months. That would then equal to what you would be paying monthly, not including interest. This should show approximately how much you'll be committing when buying the car. Although, realistically speaking, as the shop or the company selling the car does need to make a profit, it would be best to be prepared for a high yet reasonable price even if everyone wants a deal at the lowest cost. Number 3. Be assertive in what you want. When shopping for a car, it is crucial to determine the top criteria that are most suitable such as cost effectiveness and safety features. An effective way of getting a great deal on your desired vehicle would be to negotiate with politeness and assertiveness. If you are unable or unwilling to accept the price quoted by the salesperson directly, inquire politely whether there may be room for additional discounts or incentives. Negotiating can encompass more than merely financial aspects. Supplementary amenities like remote starter kits, floor mats, in addition to heated seats could also sweeten an agreement while providing further value. And for number 4, be aware of who you are dealing with. This is the most critical tactic in bargaining. Remember who you are negotiating with. Sure, at some points in your negotiation, it may feel like you're arguing into a risky conflict, but know this, the car salesperson truly wants to sell you that car. Through your purchase, they will be lessening the cars they have to sell and they will be receiving their share of the commission through this transaction too. And your relationship with the dealer does not stop there. As mentioned earlier, there will be instances where your car will need repairs and regular maintenance too. This means a continued business relationship where they earn for at least 5 years more from you. So let us say that you tried all of these bargaining strategies but you still were not able to get the car at the deal you wanted. At those times, you may need to walk away if you're not obtaining the offer you desire. Know that you have the utmost capacity to walk away from a deal when it comes down to it. If you're not able to acquire what you were hoping for, then there will surely be some other dealer who will. So now we have discussed all that you need to prepare for when choosing what to buy for your first car, what model it would be, the size when to buy it, and negotiating tips too. But what happens after you buy the car? What are the potential costs afterward? Hi everyone, we hope you are enjoying this video so far. If you are, please click that like button. It highly encourages us to put out better life-changing content for our lovely community. Now back to the video. The journey of buying your first car does not end with just driving it away after buying it. There are many financial factors to consider upon taking ownership of the vehicle. We have mentioned repairs and maintenance already, but there are also insurance and gas prices as well. A good assumption would be that maintenance per year could cost at least $1,000, gas prices per month could cost you hundreds, and car insurance could also reach up to about $700 or so. You must also factor in the financial cost when planning for a car. Depending on how much you borrow and your repayment term, expect every $1,000 of debt to have an associated fee of about $25 every 4 years. Doing these calculations makes driving off with that dream ride a little pricier. Here is some perspective if you want to buy a new model or a used car. You can buy a more recent model but keep it up to 10 years for use or you can buy a used car. Both options ensure that you will not take too much of an economic hit due to depreciation. Cars just a few years old already have experienced most of it, while keeping a shiny new ride around for 10 years will stop any further downturn in its resale worth. While buying a new car is a nice treat, you would not be losing with getting a used car instead since most of the depreciation had already been reduced and you would be getting your money's worth out of the vehicle. Lastly, we would like to introduce the 24-10 rule for the final tip. The 24-10 rule's purpose is to help you find a car that fits your budget. How does it work? Aim to put at least 20% of your desired automobile's price down. Get that car loan for up to 4 years and you should allocate at most 10% of what you make each month toward transportation expenses. This rule states that you should put at least 20% down. Also, you should finance the car for up to 4 years and spend at most 10% of your monthly gross income on transportation costs. Sticking with the 24-10 rule can help you stay on budget and wisely purchase a vehicle that fits within your finances. This strategy ensures all of your transport-related costs are factored in from monthly car payments and insurance premiums to fuel expenses. With this approach, you can avoid any unwanted financial surprises. 
Now with everything we have discussed so far, this should give you a little room to think about when going to purchase your first car. From what aspects to consider in choosing a car, how to bargain for it, test drive to see how compatible the vehicle is, and what are the financial costs to bear when getting the car. So have you learned anything from this video? What tip made the most sense for you? Let us know in the comments below. We always love reading your opinions in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching and if you have not subscribed yet, be sure to click that subscribe button and check out our other videos because here at Upthink, we always strive to bring you better life hacks and advice. We hope to see you again in our next video. Bye for now.